Assalamualaikum Waalaikum Waalaikum Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another evening of learning Islam with Masjid As Sabor, Sacramento. My name is Hazem Rashid. I am the Imam of Masjid As Sabor, Sacramento. We are located at 4926 15th Avenue, Sacramento, California, near the intersection of Stockton and 15th Avenue. We welcome you to another evening of learning. Tonight our subject is why hate or why ISIS? And one of the things we want to talk about is the relationship between ISIS and Islam. But as always, before we begin, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, with the name Allah most gracious, most merciful, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa akhtuhu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu we i openly bear witness that there is no god but the one god and i openly bear witness that Muhammad to whom the Quran is revealed is his slave servant and apostle as we begin this evening the world has again been shaken by some ISIS atrocity. ISIS, I don't even like to refer to its name because it uses the word Islam in its name, but the organization practices non-Islamic behavior. I'd like to begin with a reading from the Holy Quran that sort of illustrates that. This is from our 42nd chapter of the Holy Quran, I mean our twenty, our twenty-second chapter of the Holy Quran, Surat al-Hijra, and we're reading verses forty through forty-one. Aoudu bilahi min shaitan rajim. I seek refuge with God from the rejected enemy. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. They are those who have been expelled from their homes in defiance of right for no cause except that they say, Our Lord is God. Did not God check one set of people by means of another? There would surely have been pulled down monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which the name of God is commemorated in abundant measure. Allah will certainly aid those who aid his cause, for verily Allah is full of strength, exalted in might, able to enforce his will. And then we continue. Well, computer is not helping me out here. But the whole thing that I wanted to point out is God has enjoined us not to allow the oppression of any religious order because if we allow the oppression of any religious order we are now condoning the oppression against ourselves and so when we look at the behavior of people who call themselves members of ISIS or ISIL they are trying to expel people who have different beliefs they are trying to condemn people who have different beliefs and that is not the language of our book the Holy Quran. Our book calls the Jews and the Christians people of the book and gives them respect for having received prior revelations from Almighty God. Yet we have people who claim to be Muslim acting in a manner that is not in accord with the teachings of our religion nor is it in accord with the teachings of our prophet. Our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, allowed the Jews to exist, allowed the Christians to exist. As a matter of fact, one of the women that the Prophet had in his household was Jewish and one of the women in his household was Christian, Coptic Christian. And they were his wives. 
Now think about it. If I'm going to let somebody into an intimate relationship with me who's a Jew and one who's a Christian, doesn't that say something about the acceptability of their faith to our religion? Remember, in Al-Islam, our example is Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Our example is Prophet Muhammad because in many citations throughout the Hadith, he is called the walking Quran. So when we talk about how we figure out what the Holy Quran says, we have to look at his example as well as the words of the Holy Quran because they will be congruent. They will go together. And what we see in the example of these people who are members of ISIS or ISIL is a complete disconnect from the behavior of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. When the Prophet was in battle, he was in battle. When the battle ended, he said, we leave the lesser struggle for the greater struggle. Now, what is the greater struggle? If the lesser struggle is our physical battle against people who were trying to stop the spread of our religion, then what is the greater struggle? The greater struggle is the improvement and perfection of our relationship with God in our own selves. I have to struggle to make me better. What we see with the people of ISIL or ISIS is they're not struggling to make themselves better. They're struggling to oppress other people and to impose their will, which is not necessarily God's will. Reports of rape, reports of murder, reports of beheading, reports of all kinds of abominations that are not in accord with our religion come out every day. Innocents are attacked with suicide bombs and all kinds of other weapons that were not allowed by our religion. When Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was alive, his instructions were, if you go into battle, don't destroy the crops unless you have to. Don't disturb the trees unless you have to. Don't hurt the civilians or all those non-combatants. All you fight against are those people who are fighting against you. What do we see today? People going into train stations, airports, and blowing themselves up, killing innocent people. It is abhorrent to us as Muslims. What else do we see? We see people who have different faiths being oppressed. They try and wipe them out. If we look at what they did to the Yazidis, they kept them on a mountain and basically isolated them until God blessed them to get some relief. That is not Islamic behavior. Remember, and many people forget this, in the history of Al-Islam, for over a thousand years, the safest place for a Jew or a Christian to be was in a Muslim country. Why was that? Well, if you were in Europe and you were not Catholic, you could be killed for not being Catholic. If you were in Europe and you were a Jew, you could be killed for being a Jew. If you were in Germany and you were a Jew, you were definitely going to get killed. If you were in Russia, they had the pogroms to kill the Jews. And yet, at the same time, Jews lived among Muslims in thriving communities where they controlled their own behavior, where they could participate in government, where all they were required to do is to pay the tax. We forget that today. We lose sight of the fact that for a thousand years, Muslim, Jews, and Christians lived in harmony. Now, we do have that little intersection called the Crusades, 
but that was really a struggle by European Christians to take over the Holy Land. And it failed. Now, some people say that what's going on today is a rehash of that battle so that they can take over Jerusalem and that land. I'm not going there. But I am going to point out that for a thousand years, a Jew was more safe among Muslims than he was among European or American society. I want to cite that because that is the true history and behavior of our religion. So-called Islamic behavior of ISIL and ISIS is not true. It is abhorrent to our religion. It is a lie on our religion and it must be condemned and they need to be condemned and eliminated. We as a community of Muslims are very tolerant, but we cannot tolerate people who lie on our prophet, who lie on our faith, who hold us up to ridicule and act as if they are the arbiters of our beliefs. Now, why do I say act as if they are the arbiters? Many times you will hear people who will cite ISIL or ISIS language that says they are the only true Muslims. That's not true. Before ISIL or ISIS, there were 1.2 billion Muslims on the face of the earth. There are more than that now. ISIL or ISIS has not added one iota. It has basically destroyed many Muslim communities, killed Muslims in the name of their abortive faith. We have to recognize that and join with those who oppose ISIL or ISIS and ensure their destruction. God will bless us for it. You know, one of the last warnings that we were given in our Holy Quran was that there would come a time when the multitudes would be rushing towards our door, but many of them would have lost sight of our true religion. What we are seeing today is people that have lost sight of our religion. If you'll notice, the behavior of many of the people that are purported ISIL or ISIS activists. Strip clubs, liquor, fornication, bad behavior all around, and yet they expect to go to heaven for blowing up innocent civilians. That is insane. We have to recognize that they have been given an interpretation of Al-Islam that is abortive. When we look at the martyrs of the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, they went into battle against people that were equally well equipped as they were and they overcame in that struggle. And if they didn't overcome and were slain, then they were blessed with martyrdom and heaven. But even there, we have the Hadith that talks about the man who, who, when asked by the angels, what did you do on earth? He said, I fought and struggled in God's way and I was killed, I was martyred. And they said, no, you fought and struggled so people would say that you were brave. And so people have said, and then the order was given, drag him off into hell. What's going to happen to these crazy people who are going around thinking that they can do anything and have that absolved by killing innocent people? They're going to hell. And we have to say that quite clearly and quite actively. This is not a passive 
Well, you know, in the realm of scholars, they are not adjudged as being appropriate examples. Nah, we got to go beyond that. Because you see, we got young people who, who listen to this madness, who watch these crazy videos, which are all structured to communicate a lie and then have you act on the lie. I was, I was laughing prior to our beginning this discussion because I'm reading a book about Hitler. And one of the things Hitler was very good at was selling a lie. And if enough people buy the lie for a long enough time, you will create absolute chaos. And you will create a society that will do things that are just unimaginable. Think about it. You have a country that will kill 6 million people simply because of their ethnic difference. Not only will they kill them, they will create a system to kill them while starving them and taking away their gold, their possessions, their clothes, and everything else, and it all becomes like a factory. Whew. Just thinking about that, you sort of go, how? And yet, we have the historical evidence that it occurred. Not only that it occurred, it occurred less than 100 years ago. And we have to recognize that that example is a warning for us today in the case of ISIS and ISIL and also in the case of all of the people who are talking craziness about Muslims in this country. Because you have to understand that if you start to express hate, disgust, and oppression, you're going to force people to run to something that is in opposition to it. And we have to be very careful about how we structure our language in this country. You know, people are very sensitive today. And we also have to recognize that there is so much dissatisfaction today. And people don't know who to be mad at. So anybody that points out somebody different as the one you should be mad at, People listen to that. But we have to be very careful. I then go back to the example of my little study of Adolf Hitler. How did Hitler begin to unify the German people? He pointed out those Jews, they are responsible for all of our problems. If we get rid of them, we will do better. And what happened? People who were mad. Because remember, you got to remember what the state of Germany was then. We think we're in hard times today. In Germany, you went to the market with a wheelbarrow full of money to buy a loaf of bread. You know, today we are nowhere near that. But people are feeling uncomfortable because our whole economic world has shifted. Why has it shifted? Well, remember when America effectively consumed roughly 60 to 75% of the world's wealth? That's gone down. We're getting down to around 40 to 30 to 40% of the world's wealth. And what's happening to the rest of it? It's going to other countries, other peoples. And as it goes to other countries and other peoples, their living standard goes up. What happens to our living standard? It's going to be affected and start to go down a little. Now, if we're only concerned about ourselves, oh yeah, we, we, it's rough. Oh God, they're just stealing from us. If we look at the condition of people who were living on less than a dollar a day that now may actually be making $10 a week or $15 a week, they now have improved their whole life 
by more than double and are doing so much better. But it cost us some money. We have to understand that God is merciful. We as people have to be merciful. You know, we have that golden rule that people don't like to repeat very often because it'll call you out. Remember what the golden rule is? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If we begin to think about that before we begin to express our madness, our craziness, and all kinds of bad behavior, we would be stopped in our tracks. In our religion, God has a saying. He says, if you want to know what you should do, do that about which you feel no doubt in your heart. Now, if you feel any wavering in your heart and you got to start justifying why you feel like you do, well, you're going wrong. You got to do that thing where your heart never raises a question. You got to do that thing where nothing ever bothers your conscience. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Turn away from the hate mongers. Turn away from those who say the only way to get a solution is to kill. Turn away from those who don't respect innocent lives. Turn away from those who want to oppress others. Turn away from those who have no respect for the dignity of human life. Remember our message at the beginning. God has put one people on earth to check another people so that they will not tear down the institutions of faith, no matter which faith. And so, as we get ready to close, a simple message. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We forget that in the great history of the world, the greatest revolutions have been relatively bloodless. Remember I talked about the Holocaust being a hundred years ago? I grew up in a segregated society where men were still lynched and black people had no rights. And that was even less than a hundred years ago. My mother-in-law who just turned 80 was so shocked at the election of Barack Obama, she couldn't believe it because we grew up when just getting the right to vote got people killed. And yet we have a person of African-American descent in the White House. So what did that? Did we have a bloody revolution? Did we run around with guns killing each other? No. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. God has blessed us with examples. Let's not forget them. I want to make a couple of announcements before we close. First of all, Masjid Asabur, Sacramento at 4926 15th Avenue has Juma prayer every Friday at 1.30 p.m. We also have this coming every fourth Sunday we meet and go to Lowe's and Fishes at 10.30 a.m. And we also want to remind you that we would love for you to visit us. You can call us at Masjid Asabur, Sacramento. You can go to our website, masjidasabur.org, or our Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. We have free literature, and we would love to welcome you to our community. And I also want to make sure that we understand one thing. We thank God for every blessing that we have. You know, one of the characteristics of a believer that is neglected by these crazies in Isol and Isis, 
God says the believer is always grateful. And if you are grateful, it's very hard to be hateful. So I'd like to close as I open the, with the greetings of all of the prophets from Abraham to Muhammad, the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. May God's peace and blessings be with you, with your family, with your loved ones, and with our community. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. I want to remind everyone, Masjid Al Sabor, 4926 15th Avenue. Our new masjid is gorgeous. We just finished planting over a hundred plants in front of the masjid. We just got through cleaning up the kitchen and getting ready to clean up all of the voodoo stations. And we want you to come and join us. Every Friday, 1.30 p.m., Masjid Asabor, Sacramento. We are also on the web, www.masjidasabor.org. And we're on Facebook, so please like us. Again, we thank you for your patience and your time. We want to remind you that God truly has a message for you. And we want to remind you that we are here to give you any help that you may need. As God has taught us, He is a merciful God. As long as you come to Him and ask forgiveness, He will forgive you. So no matter where you are in life, there is a hope for change.